Hey, ha. Uh, yes, you are all bad today. Everybody's bad. You got one part of that wrong. But I'm the old kind of bad. <coughs> but I'm not good anymore. So anyway, I'm just so glad you're here. Uh, well, I'm going to say it. I'm going to start and get it out of the way. What do we, uh, what do you think about all this gambling I've told you not to do? How do you like the way uh, Vegas is getting rich? Anyway, please stay with that. What you can afford area. 100 bucks, 50, 100 bucks or something like that. Because you're not going to make money, like a living or anything. A, not, a nice thing to do, or a fun game to do, is with someone, maybe some people at a bar or at a party. You've got some uh, friends there or other people that know sports or something. And then, then you, what you want to do is, let's have a contest. You know, you go first and the lowest number you can start with, then you go ahead. You pick the very first one. So they, let's say they know somebody that starts with the number three. And what, what you said, what you are saying is, whoever can get to the lowest number, they get to go first. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> if you've got a buddy there, tell them you'll take them both on. Everybody thinks they know, you know, who they wore. Oh, who wore number 60? When you get to like 67 and stuff, who wore number 67? I, well, I know. And when I got there, I would know. And, or who wore number 43? These are numbers that, and 38. I don't know why 38 is never being used. 33 is hardly ever be used. But people think, well, they'll, they got to know somebody who played from 1 to 99, right? Okay. And I said, well, you know somebody from 3? And your buddy, what, he, and he'll say, hey, I know somebody that can start with 1. And I says, okay. Now, uh, is that it? So I said, well, I guess I'll just go first then. Because Jim Otto starts with double zero, which is lower than one. So then, of course, you've, you've thrown them off. And then I says, well, now can anybody name the next number? And somebody will say, well, it's be number one. I says, no, number zero. Number zero, Johnny Osheski for the Washington Redskins wore number zero. So now you've got two points because ahead of time you're going to want to talk. Let's just make it a dollar thing you go down a dollar up a dollar and whatever and usually by the time you get to the 70s or something they owe you like 80 bucks because you're the man and uh and you're you're probably and you've told maybe you've told them because you're nice you won't let it go over 100 or something like that and then you'll maybe you can ask them when you get to 74 or something do you want to just drop out now or do you want it do you want to and just pay 74 or do you want to go and then if I get to 100 before, or 99 before you do, because nobody wears a number 100 except referees, umpires or whatever. So uh, then you go, then they'll go on. Of course, they'll want to start, and they'll, they'll go on and pick, like, who wore number one, two, and, you know, and then if they can't guess the a next number, well, you still can get their number, even though it's not your turn, because it's their turn, but they, they don't know who wore number three. And you know Daryl LaMonica of the Raiders from Notre Dame and the, 70s wore number three before Staber started playing quarterback for him. And then, of course, everybody knows four. Uh, but I, I usually let them use any. I'll say, use. you don't have to use a four from football. You can use a four from anywhere. So people say, well, I know four, Favre. I says, okay, but do you know any other fours? So, in other words, even though they won a point, you can take that point away from them by saying, hey, Bobby Orr from the Boston Bruins wore number four, and he was the best defenseman ever, and he wore number four. So if so if they, they want to stick with football, that's fine too. Or if they don't care, then you can tell them, hey, the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, wore number four, and there's even a disease named after him. So anyway, let's say you get to number five, and it's, and it's your turn now. Well, now you're already ahead by – you just started, and you're already ahead by – six or seven bucks right and so what this usually happens almost always happens and but there'll be some guys that are really know and stuff you get to number five and people think well they know somebody or oh and those come up with McNabb and then you still own them because you say well Paul Horning more number five for Green Bay Packers 
And while you're speaking of McNabb from Philadelphia, the Roman Gaber wore number five in Philadelphia in the 60s before he got traded to the Rams. So those are all true, and you know it, and they can look it up or try to find her or something like that. So now you're just another couple hundred. So it just goes on like that. And, and you know, if they catch hold, because anybody knows 12s and 13s and 14s and stuff, but there's not hardly any 15s. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, you're the man, woman. You're not going to lose. You're going to be ready. So I just thought it would be a cool thing. So next week we're going to really get down to things that you're going to be, you're going to know. And you're, you're going to be able to tell people, hey, oh, that's not all. I know the second part of that, which hardly any, I, don't, I can't imagine you having anybody that would know that. But if you do, you do. You're still not, still not going to lose. So what I was thinking we do today is I'd like to get some uh, nicknames out of the way. And I was thinking, while we talk about Bulldogs, how many teams are named, nicknamed as Bulldogs? Anyone? No, I'm glad you asked. You didn't ask. How about Georgia? Georgia Bulldogs. Fresno State Bulldogs. The number one championship college team that first started it in 1883, the Yale Bulldogs, huh? So here you are, <coughs> and you've also got Mississippi State Bulldogs. So anyway, you'll be able to, you can, you can even make that some kind of contest and stuff in the future, because you're going to know them. And, and then I had a thing, I thought, well, I'd talk about Tigers and stuff like that. Nicknamed Tigers. Who's nicknamed Tigers? Auburn Tigers, LSU Tigers, Memphis Tigers, and on and on. So <laughs> I'm just making some notes here that these would be fun things to talk. As a matter of fact, it, did I say Auburn Tigers? If I did, I want to tell you, it's there are two schools that have two nicknames. One is the Auburn Tigers, and they have a, another nickname. It's called their war cry. It's called War Eagle. And if you watch the game, they always have an eagle that flies around and lands on this guy's shoulder and stuff. So they're, they're actually the Auburn Tigers, and I think pe most people think don't even know they're the Auburn Tigers because they only see the Eagles. They don't have a tiger there. So anyway, I just thought it. Anyway, let's talk about this is something you can do with almost anybody too in any kind of setting or standing or wherever you are. Let's name schools that have nicknames that don't end in S. Well, people, you start to think of nicknames, I'm telling you. 95 and 44, 100% pure. Almost all of them end in S. I don't care. Purple Raiders. That's okay. But just on and on. So you'll know those, and I think you might, you would know them now. Stanford actually used to be the Indians. <clears throat> Excuse me, the Indians. They're now the Cardinal. But their mascot is what? A tree. You could tell me, maybe. Somebody could tell me what, what's that. They did the whole thing getting rid of the Indians. They had that name for a thousand years. And maybe they should have got rid of it earlier because we did talk about, I believe, didn't we talk about the first Rose Bowl? They lost to that team up north when you're in Ohio. That mean, we, don't, we don't say their name. The team up north, 49 to nothing. So <clears throat> anyway... Tulane, there's a school. No, none of these people are going to know. You're going to be able to. Tulane is the green wave. And even the Alabama. Alabama's the crimson tide. Like I said, you're not even going to find 10 teams yourself. No one's going to find anywhere near, near that number that, you know, you could go from for there. Anyway, I just thought it would be kind of unique. Those th kind of things will come up. Uh, oh, my God, I want to tell you. One more, and not because they had the plane crash about 20 some years ago. The Marshall, Marshall was the, uh, sad. They're, they're the thundering her day. Anyway, I just, I don't know why I even wanted to bring that up. So, and the Syracuse, Syracuse, who you'll know, I hope you know now, they won the national championship in 59. They're called the Orange. 
you know, we always say Syracuse Orangemen. People say the Orangemen, but they're just called the Syracuse Orange. I don't know if they grow oranges up there. I don't, I don't even know how that started. Anyway, uh, anything you want to cover. So if you want to subscribe or you want to check out anything, get a hold of us however you want. And uh, like I said, next week, it's big time. I don't want to tell you the subject because I want you to, I want to see how you, what you know right when we start. So anyway, before I leave you, remember I was talking to you last time about Archibald, <clears throat> excuse me, from Yale, who he had spoken about how poetry and football go together. Well, I wanted to tell you that I, what I think is the greatest college uh, prose, and that is by Grantland Rice. And he was speaking of the backfield of Notre Dame in 1924. And it goes like this. Outlined against the blue-gray October sky, the four horsemen rode again. And in lore, they're called phantom, pestilence, destruction, and death. But in reality, their names are Stool to Her, Miller, Layden, and Crawley. These are the four horsemen of Notre Dame. And this is called his greatest prose, but actually it's my favorite of all time also. Anyway, uh, before I leave you, I, got, I, wanna, I don't want to leave you too much prose and stuff like that. But uh, my other favorite one is in the prose by Bill King. And I hate to talk about the Raiders, because you have to remember this is before anybody knew who Al Davis was and stuff like that. You know, a lot of us like the Raiders. I mean, once you know Al Davis, you can't. I mean, it's, it's impossible. And it goes something like this, what I think is the best professional prose ever. A brilliant excellence is being displayed by the master of his position. And not even Mosahovich himself could play a violin with such dexterity as Ken Stabler is playing the Minnesota defense today. And I want to say, as I'm leaving, I love you, Dylan. I'd love to hear your voice again. I'm still him. I'm still your guy. Thanks.